of regressions now, one for each group. So first of all, dummy variable, female. Female, just just ignore that. That's just a label to say female dummy. Right, we're looking at the male group. Male group, RSS is there. Record that. Next, we'll look at the female. Look for the ANOVA table. Female is there. And then we've got all the information we need. Well, almost. OK, I've got recorded that. Now, N and P, number observations. Scroll back to the pooled regression. Look in the ANOVA table. Look at the degree of freedom. Look at the total degree of freedom. 539 and then add 1 because the formula for this bit is always n minus 1. So add 1, that's 540 people altogether. If you're a bit shaky about being sure about if it's 540 or not, just go back to your original data and scroll right down to the bottom. 540. Finally, the number of parameters in your model. Well, we've got one intercept and we've got one slope because the model is of the form. If I can write it aside here, uh, we've got the dependent variable. Uh, earnings equals intercept plus slope parameter times the exponential variable, which is tenure, plus an error term. So one parameter, two parameters, it's two. Notice here that we count the intercept as well. And in a departure from econometrics textbook, some of them you use here K or K plus one. Uh, I hate using K because of the books, how books, some books will use K to denote the number of slope parameters, some books will use K to denote slope plus intercept. So you better be careful um, about that. So when I'm with students, I usually just write this in words, number of, total number of parameters, intercept and slope. All right, now put these numbers in now and calculate this thing. Just verify you get the same numbers. This way, take out your calculator or use some kind of soft um, computer to find. Of course, if you're asked to show working, this is what you do. But if you're just doing this for a project, you, you, you wouldn't submit what you've done here. So the test statistic is 16.22. Third step, remember just like in all these hypothesis tests, we now, if we're thinking about first year stats, what you do now is you look up the critical values in the relevant table. And why the Chow test is called an F test is because you need the F table to look up the critical values. The degree of freedom for this F test, that's set the significance level first, typical level is 5%. The degree of freedom, which are the parameters of the F, is the number here and the number here. So this is the numerator, this is the denominator. So here we have the 2 and 5, 3, 6. So you look up the critical value at the 5% level. Now if you don't know how to look up critical values or you're rusty with that, just go to my website statisticsmentor.com where I've got the table and I'll show you how to do that. But what you find that this number is too big, so instead we look at infinity. Uh, let's put it under. Here. Let's put it over here. Five to infinity figure, which is in the report in the table, two point nine nine five. Well, sixteen is way bigger than that, so we're going to reject it. So it's worth also reporting at the one percent. And at 1%, we get 4.605. Oh, we're going to reject it as well. For those of you who want the exact figure, you can use some kind of package like R, which is what I, I mentioned at the beginning. It's a powerful statistic package, and it's free. And uh, it's used all over the place these days. And we can get the exact critical value from this. So at the 5%, I don't explain the syntax here, I just do it. You can kind of guess what, I'm, what these numbers mean. Okay, the exact value is 3.01 at the 5%. Like 3.01 as opposed to what you get from the table. And at the 1% level, 
4.64 either way you can see so that's conclusion now since the test statistic F is greater than the critical value at the 1% level even alpha equals 1%, we conclude there is very strong evidence to reject the null, that there is no structural change. In other words, conclude that there is very strong evidence that there is structural change. In other words, that the relationship between the model explaining uh, earnings from tenure is different for males and females. In other words, in this case, that your regression line is different for males and males. It might be that the male line is steeper or shallower or it might be that the intercept is different between the two or it might be that both the intercept and the slopes are different okay now a related th procedure is dummy variables because the chow test all the chow test does is like a light switch yes or no it just tells you is there difference yes or no in the regression models between two groups it doesn't tell you where the difference is is it as i said is it could be that the intercepts are different could be that the slopes are different could be that both intercepts and slopes are different the dummy variable uh, actually can you can use that to isolate where the difference is so you, in other words the dummy variable gives you more detail about where the difference is if there is a difference uh, and that's usually some kind of um, exam question well, I hope that's been useful. Uh, take care, guys.